going on guys? So as you can see behind me, yes, the Supra is still here. I get all your guys' comments, all your Instagram messages. I read all of them. Uh, we still love the Supra and the Supra is still here. But let me just address that for a second because like every day I'm getting, I just, every time I refresh my uh, YouTube app, it's a comment. Where's the Supra? Where's the Supra? We're in a Supra, but it is right here. Uh, it's in the garage, it's fixed, it's done, it's ready. We can go out and rip it and do whatever we want. But, and I got Alejandro here who's gonna validate something for me because he has a BMW and like a Supra, they're very expensive parts. So it's not that we don't love the Supra and it's not that it's not fun. Here's the problem. When you have a car like this and you're gonna go out on Saturday night or Friday night and you're gonna drive down the highway, for you guys who don't live in Florida, people here are crazy when they drive. They change lanes, they don't look, they don't pay attention. If somebody changes lanes into me, into this car, most likely my insurance is just gonna total it out because they're not gonna be able to find parts. Everything is super rare, um, super hard to come by. And I know that sucks. I know you shouldn't build a car and then be scared to go out and drive it. Um, but anything can happen. Um, you can do a pull on the interstate and wreck into the wall and then the car is totaled. And then once it's totaled and done, you're not getting another one. Um, or I wouldn't at least, because you're first of all, you're not going to get what you put into it through insurance, and it just so it makes it very stressful. It's just not. It's yeah, you right. Yeah. It's just not a fun time. So you go out there, we go to the track, and we launch these things, and it breaks. And well, it, it happened to me that Saturday night. It happened to him Saturday night. So I think we started recording, but we didn't. What ended up happening? Um, something happened on the crank hub. The car jump timing. Uh, top of fourth. Yeah, so he's going out doing. Yes, yeah, so he's going out racing, doing some pulls like normal, top of fourth, something with the crank hub, and that's going to be uh, how much of a fix? Thousand? I, I mean, I don't know. we don't even know. It could be, you know, at this point he could probably need a new motor. We don't really know. But that's the thing. Like it's so stressful to go out and do these things, and it really does suck because you have a nice car, you want to take it out and enjoy it, but at the same time, like, I don't know. It's just a fine line between being worth it and not. So that's why I. Got the Miata, he got a Miata, and those things we'll take out and just obliterate and destroy. Do you know why? Because when I just picked up a rear end, which we're going to talk about in a moment, a whole upgraded differential is $400. Not like for this car, when I bought the original TRD LSD diff and the axles, I think it was like $4,500 to five grand. So $4,500 to five grand, like you go out and you roast the tires or you launch the car and it breaks. Like that is a substantial amount that the car is gonna sit and not move. I'll go out and we'll do all the donuts and have all the fun we want in the Miata because it's 400 bucks. And guess what? There's a million of them. There's a literally a diff on every corner, an open diff, a welded diff, something on every corner. So I just kind of want to address that because I'm just tired of all the messages about where's the Supra, why you're not driving it. Um, but we are gonna do some Supra videos, uh, some good anti-lag videos. So if you have anything cool that we can blow up with anti-lag, uh, if you haven't seen the video on Instagram, the anti-lag is brutal in this thing. Absolutely brutal. Um, but yeah, it just sucks because it's kind of like a fine. It's like owning a motorcycle. It's the same thing. Like, I'll be honest. I do like bikes. And if we lived in a place where I could guarantee that some idiot is not going to rear end me at a stoplight or change lanes and kill me, I'd probably hop on it every day and ride it to work. But people are just nuts. So I just, just not worth it. For me, the fun factor on the bike is not worth the risk of someone just killing. killing you. They just do, they just change lanes into you. It's, it's like, it's nothing. And I know some of you guys are probably gonna think Miatas are stupid. They're just cheap throwaway cars or whatever. But until you actually get one and you drive one and you boost it and you see how cheap the parts are and how plentiful the parts are and all that stuff, I'm telling you like, had I known about Miatas three or four years ago, I probably would not own a Supra. And I'm being 100% honest. So anybody out there, if you're on the fence about a project car or anything at all, it's literally peanuts to pick up a Miata. You can buy a $400 eBay turbo kit, slap it on, and go drive it. And you will gap things that you don't think you will gap. Yeah. All the things. It's, it's just a fun factor. It's you're not gonna go There's no worry. For anybody who's new to the channel, I have a ton of racing videos because I get a ton of comments on how I never race my car. Look back through the channel because I have a ton of racing, a ton of track racing, a ton of hundred and I ran the quarter, uh, the half mile at 185. I have a ton of videos, so I have done it. I feel like I'm just rambling now, yeah. on and on. Now we're just gonna but uh, the Miata car. yeah. So now let's uh, get to the point of this video. 
All right, so now that I ranted about the Supra uh, and hopefully answered a lot of your questions, now on to the point of this video. So the point of this video is we're going to pick up the Miata, more Miata stuff, uh, from Trilogy Performance. And uh, so as you guys know, it had an open diff in it. It was a 430 rear end. Uh, we did some testing with his phone app and we got around 106. Oh, we got a diesel going by. Got around 106 miles an hour in the top of fourth, I think. Yeah. Probably a little less than that. I think it was one of Almost 105. 105, 104, 105 at the top of fourth. Um, I know a lot of times stock motor cars, when you go into fifth with boost, that's when the rods can break. So they say never to go into fifth. That's just what I hear. Um, so we kind of left it at that. So that diff was open diff, one wheel peel, uh, and it was a 430 rear end. I found a Torsen 410, which should take us. Oh, our original problem was when we tested the quarter mile app, we couldn't actually get to the end of the quarter mile in fourth gear. So if we do some tracking with this car, which I definitely think we're gonna do some some uh, quarter mile runs with it, we wanna we don't wanna go into fifth. We wanna shave as much time as we can and just stay in fourth and cross over the beams at the uh, at the top of fourth. So uh, I picked up a diff yesterday, super cheap uh, compared to the eight thousand dollar or whatever it is five thousand dollar rear end, uh, four hundred dollar Torsen uh, with a four ten gear ratio. So has some good acceleration, but. It should be not one, I think 111. Yeah. Top of four. And uh, so we're gonna go to Troy's, we're gonna check it out, pick it up, and then we're gonna rip a donut. Oh, well, burnout, donut, all of it. Both. Just to see, yeah, both. And I'm sure as I'm talking up this Miata so much, it would probably break on this one time. But hey, if it does, it's another $400 diff. Axles are like 10 bucks. Somebody would trade me a pack of menthols for a, what did Brian say? The plug. <laughs> he traded a pack of cigarettes for his transmission. Uh, Stuff like that. So let's head on over to Trilogy and uh, go test this thing out. All right, guys. So we're at Trilogy picking up the Miata. And so with these diffs, uh, so we did a lot of Miata research. You can't visually tell from the outside if it has a torsion or not. The only way you can tell, you want to tip it back. So if you look through, so for anybody trying to buy a torsion, if you look through the diff and there's a bar going in there, across that means it's an open diff if it's uh hollow all the way through and you can look through it that means it's a torsen so because visually you can't tell so other than that uh it's in uh chris said the install went okay right not terrible and uh yeah we're gonna go test it out and now that we have the torsen um we're also gonna try to do some comparisons with the wing um because before the wing was helping us from you know, our spinning problem because we had an open diff, but now we're gonna try to run the app again with the GPS. Yeah. We'll do it both ways. We'll we'll launch it, you know, like or roll, whatever we were doing before, um, and just see the time difference between the wing and, and no wing. So but uh yeah we're gonna go out and do a little do a little rip here and uh we'll see how the uh, torsen works. <laughs> So we do have two tire marks all the way. We got a torsen. We got a torsen. Got Is that torsen life? All right. <laughs> 